Last time on Star Trek The Next Generation. Constable, we have reason to believe that Consultant Idia smuggled rare species into the preserve through his friend Aramut. Idia's been nothing but trouble since he got here. This time he's gone too far. I'll send for him so we can settle this once and for all. We asked Consultant Idia to go to your office. He went to get some items, then suddenly beamed out. There's a woman here asleep with a gag over her mouth. Maybe she knows. We have to recapture the Mistag Siltis. It's already killed dozens of animals. Perhaps we can rephase the force field energy frequencies. The creature may not be able to adapt quickly enough to the changes. That creature you discovered, it sounds exactly like a Veranak, a Gridian creature. Except the Veranak was exterminated long ago. We are currently searching for the Ferengi trader Aramut. I am Aramut, an honest Ferengi trader. I am not a criminal. Well, if we are mistaken, I'm sure you can explain everything to the Romulans when they find you. You can take it here. Perhaps you'd be interested in some unusual movements of the Romulan fleet. I hear reports from the other side of the neutral zone about a massive refit of the Romulan fleet, but they could easily outlast any Federation vessel at maximum warp. It sounds as if the Romulans are in a race, one they want to win very badly. Apparently the animals which Dr. Hune Forge thought were from Romulan space actually came from Shonoishu Epsilon 6, or Phrygis, as Aramut calls it, might just be our lost Garidian colony. Lay in a course for Shonoishu Epsilon 6, Warp 5. And now the continuation. Greetings everyone, Captain Angel here, and we're resuming our Let's Play of Star Trek Final Unity, Episode 5, and now we are on our way to Shonoishio Epsilon 6, Federation space. which was uh, given to us as a location by the Ferengi Aramut as a possible location for the Lost Caridian Colony, which may contain the Fifth Scroll. So we are just about to arrive in orbit, let's see what we find. Captain's Log Supplement. The Enterprise has arrived at the Shono Isho Epsilon system, where according to Aramut's data, we expected to find the world where the followers settled. However, our sensors show no Class M planets in the system at all. Helm, standard orbit. Okay. No Class M planets, you say, but we know that, you know, Class M is not the only habitable world, it's just that that's the most optimal habitable kind of world for humanoid species, or certainly carbon-based life forms as we know them. Um, but there are other classes where life is possible, it's just, you know, harder to uh, make out your living on them, so... Okay, um... Well, let's, let's hail it and see what happens. There is no response from the planet, Captain. Okay. Uh, Worf, any... Worf, you're an ally, Captain. We should check our... Uh, okay, no. Nope. Data, is it possible there's something we missed? I can attempt to enhance the scan matrix. That may increase our sensor resolution. Make it so. Okay. Does that... How long do we wait? Mr. Data. I suggest we... Okay. Number one. Aramot is a Ferengi. Maybe he altered his navigational logs to throw us off the track. That is a possibility. There is physical evidence, however, that Aramot did visit the system. What sort of evidence, Mr. Data? The hull of Aramot's ship had recently been irradiated by chromaton particles. Shonoisho Epsilon is the only star in this sector that emits chromaton particles. <laughs> That's such a Star Trek thing to do, uh, or explaining why, uh, how they, they know that this ship's been in this area. Chromaton particles. I'm pretty sure chromaton particles have been used for something else in TNG or Voyager. I can't remember off the top of my head. 
there's chroniton particles so maybe that's what I'm thinking not chromaton <sighs> Okay, so... Troy, is there any life that you can sense? I don't think Aramut was lying to us about this location, Captain. I do sense life out there, but it's hard to be more specific at this distance. If the followers are out there, how do you propose we locate them? These are people who fled from persecution on Garid. They might be hiding deliberately. It may be better to let them locate us by sending out a general message of friendship. Perhaps one of our passengers could think of something that would encourage the followers to respond. Okay, that's not a bad idea at all. Troy being useful. Hey, there you go. Stranger things have happened. Okay, well... I think Tabak's probably the best, because he's the scholar. He knows about the fifth scroll. I think the other two will just say, sorry, I can't help you. Um... Let's see what Lucana says. ...at Aramut's coordinates, but if the followers are here, they're hiding. Do you suppose they'd respond to a message of friendship? I don't know. <laughs> so abrupt. Does Avocado do the same? ...at Aramut's coordinates. Why ask me? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well... Clearly Tabak is the only guy, then. We've arrived at Aramut's coordinates, but if the followers are here, they're hiding. Do you suppose they'd respond to a message of friendship? Perhaps they would pay attention to someone who quoted the lawgiver. Captain, if you patch me through your comm system, I could send out an appropriate message. Make it so. Aye, Captain. And when the lawgiver left Gerrit, he said of the ruling council, they have taken my words and engraved them backwards. Okay. There is no response, sir. Well, it was worth a try. And I think we just need to wait just like a minute. Sir, we are being hailed. Who is this that knows the lawgiver's lament? Okay, another interesting 2D artwork of the face. No uh, photorealism going on here. Nice hat. This uh, kind of looks like the Morassian planet, or at least the uh, biome where it was all like a, a desert. Similar kind of uh, um, topology going on here. I am Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? I shall need more information before I can trust you. Tell me more about yourself. We represent the United Federation of Planets. We are on a mission of peace. Is that why your ship is bristling with weapons? We use our weapons purely for defense. I see. And would the Federation be willing to defend us? Starfleet protects all of Federation space, which includes this system. If you wish, your world could even apply for Federation membership. That's... interesting. I mean... Okay, they're in Federation space. Picard says we'll defend you if you're in Federation space, but... Uh, these people clearly are aware of other races. I mean, they're Garidian, they fled from a uh, different uh, part of space. But what if they don't want to be members of the Federation, but still wish to claim the space? Does the Federation then cede control of that space? What if that entity then wants to expand their space to surrounding systems? What happens then? Does the Federation say, nope, this is ours? Or would they just say, okay, yeah, that's yours? I mean, obviously it might depend on their local neighbours and such, but... I mean, that's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess if you're in Robulan or Klingon or Cardassians, they would just go, no, and just conquer them. But uh, for Starfleet, at least, or the Federation, they would probably at least consider ceding certain control uh, if it meant they gained an ally. But they, I think that's kind of interesting just from a perspective of, you know, you, you become a space fairy civilization and then just find you're in the middle of this other intergalactic empire. How do you proceed from there? Just food for thought. Anyway. I don't think the Romulans or Garidians would like that. They both have made claims on this world. How, though? They don't know where you are. We just discovered you, so... I mean, I guess they could say that we, we claim this world if we should ever find it, but... That is unfortunate, but immaterial. Your planet is in Federation space. If you ask for our assistance, we will give it. That is a noble attitude. 
speak to you then. Speak to you again later. Okay. Bye, bruv. <laughs> um, curious if you. I'm sure you can just hail him again, but uh, I I do like that it gives you the option. But we obviously can't proceed without uh, going any further. So let, let's continue. We have several Garidian refugees aboard. They are seeking to bring the wisdom of the Lawgiver's fifth scroll back to Garid. Garid had its chance and it cast the Lawgiver and our ancestors aside. It is too late to mend their relations with us now. That's a bit harsh. I mean, it's a thousand years ago. You could at least, you know, give them the chance. These are reformers hoping to use the Lawgiver's words to improve Garidian society. That is a cause the Lawgiver would have approved. You've given me much to think about, Captain. Allow me a few moments to consider it. I understand. We will remain in orbit and await your response. Okay. I think we just wait for a minute now, again. Don't think anyone has anything interesting to say, no. So, uh... Sir, we are being hailed. Yep, there we go. On screen. I have decided to trust you. I am Larak, Chancellor of the Planet, Phrygis. How did you know we were here? Phrygis is certainly a bit easier to say than Shonoishio Epsilon-6, so... A Ferengi trader claimed he picked up some Garidian animals here. Aramut. We started dealing with him to purchase some outside technology and we gave him some animals in return. Fortunately, we never told him much about ourselves. How do you manage to conceal your entire planet? The technology is similar to the Romulan cloaking device. It fools sensors into misreading what they see. We had to protect ourselves in case Garrett's forces came after us. Fools sensors, eh? Now we've encountered something like that already, uh, if you remember. Uh, Merton's orbital station, the intruder ship, it also fooled our tricorders. Hmm. May I send some of my crew down to learn more about you? Since our deception is discovered, I suppose there is no harm in letting a small number of off-worlders visit. But there must be no Garidians in the party. They have not yet earned our trust. I agree to your terms, Chancellor. I shall send my first officer, Commander Riker, as my personal representative. Good, Captain. It is always gratifying to deal with a man of reason. I will transmit the landing coordinates to your computer. Thank you. Number one, this is an extremely important first contact situation. I want you to lead the away team. See if you can locate the fifth scroll for our Garidian passengers. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're off now to our third away mission, which will hopefully be a lot more interesting than Morassia was. Um, so... I think if we actually took Picard on this mission, Larak gets a bit annoyed because he... We promised that it would be Riker that we send. Um, I'm not going to do that, because I don't think there's much point, but... Uh, Commander Riker, please report to the transporter room. I think it's cool, though, that... Um, certainly on this higher difficulty, if you choose your crew, it can affect the outcome of your missions, and you get different dialogues as well. So, for example, um, if you didn't take LaForge on the Merton's Orbital Station uh, mission, um, you will not save the station. It's impossible for you to save the station. I mean, if you have Data, who is arguably, comparably, as knowledgeable as LaForge in engineering, um, although perhaps without the intuitive uh, aspect of LaForge, you... Um, yeah, you, you can't save the station, and so you, you would fail an aspect of that mission. So I think each away mission forces you, or at least you have to have at least one or two critical crew members on board, otherwise you just can't progress or you can't get to the perfect outcome. And I like that. Um, and yeah, the, the variable dialogue is also good as well. I think this is the optimal one for this away mission. I know we need Riker, and I know we need LaForge. And I think Troy's useful for just doing some personal observations, so... Yeah, I think that's good. Let's... Energize.
May the lawgiver's spirit smile on you. I am Chancellor Larak. Welcome to Phrygis. Okay. So, like I said, um, kind of similar to Marassia in that uh, desert like area. Got some volcanoes, got some structures here with some weird orbs, and Larak himself also has a orb on his head. Let's have a chat. Thank you for letting us beam down. I'm Commander William Riker of the Starship Enterprise. Except for Aramut, we have not had outworld visitors since the lawgiver brought us here. I have thousands of questions to ask, but I will do it at another time. How can I help you, Commander Riker? What are these pyramids? The pyramids are relics of an ancient race called the Chodak. They were here long before we arrived from Garid. Each sect adapted a pyramid to serve as a transporter to their temple. The Chodak again, eh? I think that's the third mention of them now. Almost like uh, the game is pointing us as to the Chodak as a possible narrative plot point. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, though. We've heard of the Chodak, but it's rare to find evidence of their presence in this section of the galaxy. Oh, yes. The Chodak Empire was vast indeed. Like the lawgiver before me, I have made extensive studies of their culture. I am actually considered something of an expert in the translation of Chodak runes. I'm sure that might be useful in the future. We're looking for information about the fifth scroll your lawgiver brought here with him. Why are you aliens interested in our scroll? It may be the only way to prevent a civil war back on Garrett. Can you help us? Interesting that we got that little pause to have him hold his necklace bauble or something. I am afraid not. I am only in charge of the civil government. That is a religious matter, so you must ask the leaders of the sects for help. It's only been a thousand years since the lawgiver left Garrett. Has your religion had such serious splits in so short a time? Well, that's not that hard to believe. I mean, just look at our own real world history. How, how often has religion split or its interpretation has changed uh, over a thousand years? I think that's a little naive of you, Riker. Sadly, yes. Even before the lawgiver's death, his disciples began to disagree over the way his writings should be interpreted. They each made a copy of the fifth scroll that emphasized their own particular biases over all the others. Mm-hmm. Sounds familiar. That must have been confusing. It was worse than that. The lawgiver became disgusted with them and hid his original manuscript, vowing that no one would find it until the sects learned to cooperate. Kind of reminds me of Shakar in Babylon 5, Season 5, because he started to become a religious icon and he had written the book of Shakar. And even though he was still alive, uh, his book became so popular that people were... You know, they wanted to understand his interpretations, but they didn't. They Im they imparted their own biases upon what he had written, even though he was trying to teach uh, a different thing. So, yeah. Uh, just uh, something that reminded me. If you haven't seen Babylon 5, by the way, please do. It's it's a fantastic series. A little difficult to get into, a bit, bit wonky acting. Um, but, yeah, very highly recommend. From the way you're talking, I guess they never have. An accurate appraisal. The lawgiver said he left the keys to the scroll's location with each of the sects. But so far, after centuries of feuding, all the sects have done is formalize their competition into the Declaratory. The Declaratory? Yes. A series of philosophical contests the sects hold every decade. The winner has the right to collect some prize from the loser. Well, you've been very helpful. Thank you. I must return to my other duties now, but... I will monitor your progress as my schedule permits. May the spirit of the lawgiver guide your steps. Okay, bye. And this egg is glowing. We've got some ambience now. Ambience. This generates the power to run the pyramid's transporter. This is incredible. This building is 900,000 years old. There are distinct readings of transporter activity inside. This gener- This is in- Those volcanoes are too far away to get a reading on. Okay. I'm not sure what- This is in- I'm not sure- 
Okay, I was just testing the sound because it, it sounded like uh, in my right ear, LaForge is over here. That kind of makes sense because he's on the right side of the uh, screen. Anyway, um, okay, so we've got our big obvious door. I think this is where the game kind of thinks we should go first. I don't think it matters too much. Um, we certainly don't have as many options as we did in Morassia, um, which is not a bad thing necessarily, but uh, let's, uh, let's get on with it. May the wisdom of the lawgiver ring sweetly in your ears. I am Songmaster Stamblier, leader of the Chanters. Chancellor Larak told me to expect you. How may I help you? Again, nice. Relaxing ambience. There's no annoying <coughs> or other looped sounds, which is good. It's these things. Boys make music by blowing out air, just like we do when we whistle. Uh huh. This just needs a sonic redigitizer to get it working again. No unusual, no unusual reading. This looks like a complicated instrument. Those plants are unbelievable. It's a golden ring. It's just a hole in the wall. There's no ring around this hole. It's a golden ring. <laughs> what do we th think about Stambler? He seems like a pretty decent guy. I sense this man is basically open and good-hearted, but he might get a little touchy if you say the wrong thing. This is Stambler. So you see what I mean? The different dialogue from different people, it's because everyone else is like, yeah, that, that's Stambler. Just, Geordie has a bit more of a intuitive. You know, he seems like a decent guy, whereas Riker and Data are more just factual, but Troy is the one who gives the most verbose response here because she's reading his thoughts. I, I really love the attention to detail in these character interactions. Uh, it, it really helps make the game for me uh, be, be one of the more interesting uh, Star Trek games that you come across. Uh, okay, so let's have a chat with Stamblia then. I'm Commander Riker of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Okay, a lot of options here. Um, let's start with complimenting his temple, maybe ask what it is, and then we'll just go through all the questions. So, may not have much to say here, but let, let's just get through it. Lovely temple you have here. Thank you. We constructed this chamber to optimize its acoustic effects. What is this place? This is the practice hall of the Choir of Holy Intonations. Here we grow the pluvoids and perfect their chants. These pluvoids seem to be some form of plant life. Do they actually understand what they're singing? Not really, but they have beautiful tonal quality. That is important for holy chants. Why do you call yourselves the chanters? Our founder, Ifnik, believed the path to true enlightenment lies in singing. We grow these pluvoids and train them to sing holy songs. By focusing so deeply on the eternal mysteries, we gain a clearer insight into the nature of religion and salvation. Your instrument seems to be broken. What's wrong with it? Oh, we lost its sonic redigitizer to those discordant seekers in the declaratory many years ago. Why is there one hole that doesn't have a gold ring around it? Oh, we lost that ring to those discordant seekers in the declaratory many years ago. Okay, so the seekers uh, tend to be the winners in the declaratory, it seems. Can you help us find the original fifth scroll? What is wrong with the copy our sect has? We need the original for historical research purposes. Oh, I see. I do not think I can help you. Our sect has lost so many items in the declaratory that I doubt we would be very good treasure hunters. But some of our chants go back for centuries, even to the days of the lawgiver. Would you like to hear one? Um, 
Okay, yes. Now, although we can reject this, we do actually... I'm pretty sure we need to hear it because he gives us a, uh, a local recording and I'm pretty sure we're going to need that for a puzzle later on in this mission. So we're going to listen to it. Uh, they cannot be skipped and I think a couple of these are longish, like 30 seconds, so we'll just have to enjoy it. They're, they're not terrible, as I recall, but let's, uh, let's have a listen to these lovely pluvoids. That's a very generous offer. I would love to hear your blue void sing. We are happy to oblige. This chant is called The Futility of Wisdom. <laughs> Thank you for letting us hear that. It was very enlightening. Since you enjoyed it so much, I shall give you an orchestrion that will let you listen to it whenever you wish. And feel free to visit us anytime. May the songs of the Lawgiver bring you fulfillment. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you for... Yes, okay. Um... This orchestrion plays The Futility of Wisdom. There's a recorder inside here. There's a miniaturized recorder in here that lets you play back the music. This orchestra. Okay, well, um, I guess that's done. Nice and efficient. Let's go to the next one. Hello. I am Madia, the Gynarch of the Questers for Inner Strength. Chancellor Larak warned me about you. She doesn't look very Garidian. Very gothic architecture going on here. And she just kind of faded in and is now holding this lovely kind of crucified star. So we've got a, what looks like a field of some kind, maybe a force field. Doesn't seem to be much else interesting, though, compared to the previous chamber. I'm Commander William Riker. Let's go through the usual lovely temple. What is this place? And then the others, uh, other options. Lovely temple you have here. Thank you. It stimulates our contemplations. What is this place? This is the Grand Penatorium where my subjects meet to become more disciplined and more firm-willed. Your regimen sounds quite difficult. It is. Only the most dedicated can accomplish the regime. What about you? You would be a good candidate for discipline, if only I still had my scepter of light. Why don't you still have your scepter of light? Those horrendous seekers took it from me during the last declaratory. I would give anything for it. We are planning revenge next time. There's those seekers again. Why do you call yourselves the Questers for Inner Strength? Our founder, Plegu, believed that the outer body must suffer to make the inner soul stronger. Only by learning to deny the sensations of our outer bodies can we make our spirits free. So, they sound a bit like a bunch of sadists. Can you help us find the original fifth scroll? My people have always looked inside themselves for their strength. We have never cared for external things to aid our spiritual quest. Why do you have a force field inside your temple? There is a Chodak transporter pad behind it that the Lawgiver frequently used during the last years of his life. We want to preserve it from prying eyes. Maybe the original fifth scroll is back there. May we investigate it? 
I have no desire to share my temple's treasures with aliens. Thank you for your time. You certainly wasted enough of it. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of uh, Idia on Marassia. Very similar line when you cut communications with him. It's like, thank you for wasting it. <sighs> well, I guess that's it. Hello? Well, that was a bit overly dramatic. Okay, cool. Um, what do you think of her, Riker? I've known some women like her before. <laughs> oh, you dog, Will. This is one impressive lady. <laughs> okay. Apparently LaForge digs her too. This woman is strong-willed and used to getting her own way. We should be careful with her. Troy, obviously cautious. Media seems determined to assert her authority. And a uh, nice logical look from data. Let's uh, have a look at this force field. I've never seen a force field quite like this one before. Okay, what about you, data? This appears to be an unknown. Okay. There is a barrier. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything else. It's, yeah, it's just her in the force field. Okay, well, moving on. Okay, I think this is the only way we can go. I did check the manual, by the way. The shift to move faster is actually in the manual, but it's yeah, a little bit buried, but you do have, it, it is there. Wish I'd read that as a kid a bit more closely. Oh, what's this? It's a pretty sturdy plant. Uh, data. This plant stores water in its skin and has an interior air sac to help keep it cool. Okay. Can we take it? This isn't an exploratory mission. There'll be plenty of time for biology experiments later. Okay. Guess not. So, hang on. Is there anything else? to look at... Mm, no. Okay. May the Lawgiver's spirit grant you wisdom. I am Arch Rashan Nachu, chief assistant to his exalted prominence, Elant of the Seekers. Chancellor Larak told me to expect you. How may I be of service? Uh, he doesn't sound dodgy at all. No, I, I don't have a very suspicious voice at all. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, a lot more heavy on the gothic architecture again. Um, what have we got? Got a, a vault, an arch, sculpture, door. I think we want to go there at some point. Let's make some observations on this totally okay dude. I'm not sure how far we can trust him. There's something about this guy I just don't like. Again, with the intuitive uh, nature from the forge. I sense this man is very ambitious. He's not exactly lying, but he doesn't care about helping us either. This person claims to be not chill the assistant to the leader of this sect. So Data obviously has no real intuitions about it, which is fine. Riker is, has his own thoughts. Yeah, I'm, okay, like I just said, I've already said this earlier, I, I love the attention to detail on the characters and their observations. It's Whoever wrote this really had a good grasp on the characters of Trek. Um, and I've said before, again, the, uh, the stances of everyone. LaForge clasping his hands in front of him. Uh, data with his tricorder out. Yeah, it's it's great stuff. But uh, anyway, um, <sighs> yeah, fine, LaForge. Can you can just try? Device will need exactly the right key to open it. No unusual. There's some fascinating technology involved in this mechanism. It's a metal door, very solid. I can't read anything. The alloys in the metal require very high technology to manufacture. Higher than I have seen so far on fridges. So why I keep switching between data and LaForge? Because they both can give different answers because they have different fields of knowledge. Again, going back to the um, 
the strength of uh, writing the characters and what they're likely to say. It's great stuff. This is an elaborate holographic projection system. See, LaForge didn't say that, but Data did. It will not open. Yeah. Oh, wrong button. And uh, well, let's let's talk to this totally not dodgy guy of Nutchill. Commander Riker of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Lovely temple you have here. Thank you. It pleases us. What is this place? It has many names. It is usually called the Hall of Triumph. But recently, some have called it the Path of No Return. Seems ominous. Why is this normally called the Hall of Triumph? Our sect has been understandably successful in the declaratory contest. This is where we keep the prizes we have won, safe in our vault. When did this start being called the Path of No Return? More than a month ago, our leader Elant vanished through the Door of Enlightenment. He has not returned. Hmm, I'm guessing this is the Door of Enlightenment. What is this door of enlightenment? At the end of this path is a door no one has ever opened. No one before Elant, that is. Sorry, I, I skipped a bit of dialogue there. I, I don't think it was much was missed. Um, so no one but Elant has opened it in a thousand years, and presumably we will as well. Uh, okay. Why hasn't anyone opened this door before? There is a gatekeeper who jealously guards the doorway. He asks a series of questions when anyone tries to pass it. And if the person does not answer all the questions appropriately, the gatekeeper will not let him pass. What is the gatekeeper like? It is a very advanced device with strange, almost telepathic powers. Some say it is hold over Chodak technology. And others say the lawgiver had something to do with it. Why is your group called the Seekers? Our founder, Baranam, believed that the path to enlightenment lies in searching for the truth. We are humble in our ignorance. Only the truth will free our souls. Can you help us find the original fifth scroll? I can let you see the true copy made by Baranam, our sect's founder. Hmm. We're doing this for historical research. I'm sure you understand that no matter how good your copy is, we need to check the original for authenticity. I am afraid I cannot help you. The original was hidden by the lawgiver many centuries ago, and I do not know where it is. Isn't it possible that the original fifth scroll might be hidden on the other side of the door of enlightenment? I suppose so, but why should we risk our safety when we have the true copy of the scroll anyway? Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Nothing more to say. Okay, well, uh, let's go check out this door then. Can we get a better reading on this thing now? It would take me days to figure out all this sir. It would take considerable time to... The alloys in the metal... Okay. It didn't work. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see anything. Hmm. Hmm. Intriguing. Okay, well, let's go to the door then. Come no closer. 
I am the gatekeeper of the door of enlightenment. You must answer my questions appropriately to determine whether you are wise enough to proceed. Those who answer inappropriately will be punished if they attempt to pass. Okay, I do remember this uh, little puzzle. It's fairly simple. Um, you're basically, I think you ask three or four questions, you get like five options, four or five options. And in each case, you basically have to say, uh, I don't know, or I have no specific answer to the question. You're given specific answers, and then you're just given one option where you say, yeah, I don't know. And uh, the philosophy here is basically uh, uh, knowing nothing. What's the phrase? Sorry. True knowledge comes from knowing that you know nothing. That's the one. Uh, or something to that effect. So, yes, let's... Let's uh, uh, go with the quest. Uh, and I'm amazed over a thousand years, only one person has figured this out. Ask me your questions. What is the central principle of the fifth scroll? Okay. So yeah, we've got five options here. Each of the first four are specific answers. <clears throat> All of them are true in their own way. But... Uh, we, we don't actually know. We've not read the Fist Scroll, so I think in this case this is actually quite true. We're not sure what to believe. Everyone has a different interpretation, and that's very true. Everybody seems to have a different interpretation. I'm not sure what to believe. Knowing what not to believe often eliminates confusion. Why do you wish to pass through the door of enlightenment? <laughs> I want to be enlightened. Again, I think, yeah, I don't know. So, our curiosity of finding knowledge. I don't know what is beyond it. Then you do not know what you are seeking. Who was the lawgiver? I'm suddenly worried I didn't answer that second question correctly, but let, let's find out. Um, okay, yeah, he's a great man, but we have no personal knowledge of him. I heard that he was a great man but I have no personal knowledge of him. You are stating that you know that you do not know. Who are you? Well, I'm Commander William T. Riker, ladies' man extraordinaire, defeater of a Borg cube, uh, and, uh, yeah, perpetually first officer of the USS Enterprise and turning down every command offered to him. That's him. But anyway, we know that uh, this is the correct answer. Everyone plays so many roles in life. It is impossible to label them. You understand the fundamental paradox of existence. To know that you know nothing is the beginning of enlightenment. Your answers prove that you are ready to admit this. You may pass through the door. Okay, so... Either I didn't get one of them right and there's just, you know, you have to get three or four of them right, or I got all of them right. In any case, we can pass through the door. Let's take a look. Okay, now this is very different architecture from what we've previously seen, and it's very cool. I like it looks suitably alien and this is the benefit of um, the the gaming world and over the TV show because obviously they couldn't show anything this kind of elaborateness back in the day I mean today obviously you've got uh, elaborate CGI green screen work or LED screens but uh, back in the day you could never uh, depict something so alien like this not without a huge amount of money um, so yeah the, this this is really nice artwork here I really do like this um, I think this is Chodak technology, so this is our first glimpse of what Chodak architecture and technology looks like. Okay, so we've got someone here. Somebody's trapped in there. I'm willing to bet that panel will let us turn off the stasis. It's some kind of sign, but I don't know what language it's in. Now let's get Geordie over here. And use the tricorder. This is incredible. To find the panel operational after all this time. This must be an unknown language if the universal translator doesn't read it. Uh, maybe data then? 
I see no... Oh, wrong tricorder. The tricorder does not have sufficient data, and hence cannot analyze the writing. These controls are still in operational condition. This stasis field stops the effects of time on any object within it. A living being is trapped inside it. That's probably Alant, then. Interesting. This is written in a language with which I am unfamiliar. Given the premise that the Chodak once inhabited this world, it is possible that this could be a sample of Chodak writing. Okay, not using the control panel. These controls are very complex. I could not guarantee to use them successfully without a great deal more study. Okay, uh, well, we know that Chancellor Larak is an expert on Chodak writing, so we would need to go and talk to him. Uh, we can't communicate with him, so I think we just go back to the starting position and then he's just there. Conveniently, for us to talk to him. So, let's head back. Oh, Natural's gone. Maybe he saw the door open and thought, ah! The door has opened, yes. I'm going to let everyone know. I mean, personally, I would have just gone straight through the door and followed everyone in. Um, I mean, why has the door not closed afterwards? I, I suppose this is a technical limitation of the game itself, but, uh, you know, th this doesn't feel like a lived-in city. So far, we've seen four people of this civilization, and that's it. Uh, no one else. Just leaving this door open, and no one's just going to wander in. Eh, uh, whatever. And there's Larak, just conveniently hanging out here, waiting for us to talk to him. Of the lawgiver strengthen you. Have you had much success in your search? We found Alant, but he was trapped inside some sort of stasis field. Have you ever encountered anything like that? Thank the lawgiver you found him. I was worried about my old friend. No. I have not heard of such a field, but it is probably Chodak in origin. We still find many Chodak devices here, and they are often operational, even after all these years. Can you help us free Alant? Without knowing how to operate the device, I have no way to assist you. There was a control panel with a sign near it. We couldn't translate the writing. The Lawgiver made a great study of the ruins and developed a Chodak Garidian translator I will upload it into your tricorder. Perhaps it will help you save Alant. Thank you very much. This may be an enormous help. Alant is my friend. I do hope you can free him. But if you will please excuse me now, I have a planet to govern. Bye! <laughs> yeah, awfully convenient that he was just standing there waiting for us to give us the exact information we needed and then, oh by the way, I'm rather busy, gotta govern the planet and everything. I get it. We gotta move the plot along. Still, questions, questions. Okay. <laughs> that was something I wasn't expecting. You and me both. Okay. We're doing just fine. The new plants have. The seedlings have already spread their roots into the ground. Okay. Do we take them then? This isn't an exploratory mission. Uh, there aren't very many of them. It might be an endangered species. Okay. I think that was just a bit of flavor. Something to happen. It's kind of like the uh, animals on Morassia. So, all the way back. Uh, let's have LaForge do this. Let's translate the writings. With step-by-step -step instructions like these, we'll have no problem using the control panel to turn off the stasis field. Okay. Turn them off, then. By the lawgiver's wisdom, what is happening here? I can't make it work with that. Why not? It's a medical tricorder. Unless only Crusher can use it. Well, that's kind of stupid. Whatever. Uh, Medkit, maybe? I can't use this. No? Okay. Well, let's just talk to him then. Although, can we observe him? This is the real leader. 
This is Elon. This man is both wise and beneficent. I trust him. Beneficent. Nice word. He must have a great deal of insight to have passed the door of enlightenment. The only one in a thousand years. I'm Commander William Riker of the Starship Enterprise, representing the United Federation of Planets. We're visiting Phrygis by permission of Chancellor Larock. I presume you are Aelant, exalted prominence of the Seekers. I am indeed. This is all most peculiar, but according to my studies, the lawgiver expected us to have off-world visitors this year, so I should not be so surprised. Okay, well, let's make sure he's okay. Are you feeling all right? Thank you for your concern. I am feeling a little dizzy, but I think it will pass. How could the lawgiver foretell our coming in this particular year? He was a prophet. Prophets are supposed to foretell things. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. What is this place? I scarcely know myself. I only came through that door a few minutes ago and I've not had much chance to look around. I suspect this is a room built by the Chodak, the original inhabitants of this world. Their ruins are all around us. I know it seems like you were here only a few minutes, but it was much longer. You've been trapped in a stasis field. Time actually stopped for you. I see. It was a rather disorienting experience. Do you remember what happened? When I entered the room, I saw a pair of talismans sitting on that rock. I climbed down to get them, but as soon as I touched them, alarms sounded and I just lost consciousness. Then you were here when I awoke. You've been in stasis over a month from what your assistant Natural told us. Natural? That devious Dromafex is probably plotting some way to take over my position. I must return to the temple as quickly as possible. How can I thank you for rescuing me from that stasis field? Thank you for your generosity, but a reward isn't necessary. The customs of my sect compel me to show my gratitude. Here are the talismans I picked up as well as the key to our vault which holds the trophies we have won in the declaratory over the years. You may take up to three items to help you in your mission. Thank you. We'll try to use your gifts wisely. Please excuse me. The effects of the stasis field have worn me out. I will rest here a while and then return to my temple. I'm sure I must have been missed. Yeah, I bet Natural won't be pleased to see you though. Alright, uh, so we've got three things here. This is the key to the Seeker's Vault. It's some sort of antique bauble. It's some... Uh, are they... The Tricorder says this is operating at a phase variance of 3,000 kilohertz. The Tricorder says this is operating at a phase variance of 5,000 kilohertz. So they're probably going to be useful later. Okay. Alright, um... I think I'm going to pause it there. Oh, okay, LaForge, you, you come over here. Oh, and Troy. Oh, whatever. Yeah, um, I'm going to stop it there. I, I want to try and keep these episodes down to basically episode length of uh, TNG. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying this a lot more than Morassia's so far. It's nowhere near as tedious with the back and forth of the... Uh, uh, the probes and scanning and god awful annoying looping sound effects um, this world is much more interesting uh, there's some interesting artwork here uh, particularly in this room uh, I feel this is a lot more streamlined of a uh, away mission uh, certainly the Morassia Morassia was just a slog and I don't feel that this is a slog uh, it's not particularly exciting either but yeah uh, I'm not bored Certainly not bored, and I hope you're not either. Uh, but yeah, I will cut this off from here today, and uh, we will resume episode six, uh, part two of Frigis, or Shono Ishio Epsilon Six, and uh, I think then we can wrap up this away mission and proceed on with the story. So yeah, until then, my friends, take care.